Union Rags will head to the Grade 1 Florida Derby as the deserving favorite after an impressive win in the Grade 2 Fountain of Youth. He is trained by Michael Matz, who memorably won the Florida Derby and also the Kentucky Derby in 2006 with Barbaro. For the past six years, Michael Matz's right-hand man has been assistant trainer and exercise rider Peter Brett. Peter came to work for Michael after a successful career in Dubai as a champion jockey and trainer. Michael offered me a, an assistant's job with him, so we, my wife and I moved up to Pennsylvania and started working for Michael. And at that time, Barbara arrived and he was just a two-year-old then, so things worked out really good. Peter plays a big role in the operation. He's the first assistant, and uh, he's in here every day looking at all the horses. He's a very good person to, to bounce things off of. I think the big advantage is that uh, Peter can get on the horses and ride them, and uh, a lot of times you see something, but the rider feels something different. So this helps in a way that, uh, you know, I have two people, uh, he gets to feel what the horse feels like, and I get to see what he looks like. One of the first graded stakes horses they teamed up with was Barbaro. He was, he was pretty special to ride from day one. Um, he was like sitting on a three-year-old. He was beautifully balanced, which is one of the first things I noticed about him. And um, he was a horse that just kept progressing and progressing and progressing. And every time we, he raced, the next time he, he was so much better. And, and that just continued, you know, up until his brilliant performance in the Derby. Barbaro's fourth lifetime start came in the Grade 3 Holy Bull at Gulfstream Park in 2006. Well, he was sloppy and it was a terrible day, but he, he was, it wasn't his best performance, but he, it was on the surface that he's never handled before, so, you know, he, and then he showed what a, a diverse little horse he was then. Barbaro's Florida Derby was quite exciting because I think that's probably the only time in his career that he ever was tested a bit and uh, he broke from the 10 post position and at that point I don't think too many horses have won from the 10 post position going a mile and eight. So uh, we were a little concerned for that. Edgar wasn't concerned, Peter wasn't concerned, but uh, of course I was. Actually we were more worried about Sharp Humor because Sharp Humor was a really tough horse. I, I believe he won the Swale and the race was always gonna set up for Sharp Humor and that was our biggest worry and um, you know, Sharp Human was a very, very good horse, and I think that was a, it was a brave performance by Barbaro, and at first I was a little, little disappointed he only won by a short margin, but after, I spoke to Edgar straight away afterwards, and he said, you know, he just he hit the front and sort of just idled with him, and, you know, he said, if you've seen him gallop out, he galloped out like 10 lengths in front, so that, that sort of um, calmed me down a little bit, and after the Florida Derby, he was, he was a totally different horse, he was... He'd become like a beast of a horse, you know? It's, it's as though the penny had just actually dropped and he was just this unbelievable race horse to sit on. After winning the Florida Derby, Barbaro headed to the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown with an undefeated record. I remember um, being so confident. I don't know whether it was the first time I'd ever been a sort of through the progression of the Florida Derby, the Kentucky Derby, but in my mind, it, he couldn't get beat. It, it was just, I just couldn't see him getting beat at all, you know? So it was it was just one of those, everything just went wide. He trained brilliantly. His breeze before the derby was unbelievable. Whatever we wanted to do, he did it. And it, it was just so effortless to see, really. So we, we were really, really confident in the Kentucky Derby, which seems a little strange now. To win like he did, and, and the way he won was just phenomenal. And, um, you know, that just blew my mind away when the race and he came out of the race in, in great form too, you know, it was just, it was an unbelievable experience. You know the Triple Crown's a big deal, you just don't realise how big a deal, you know. You know, as soon as you won the Kentucky Derby, people were going, well done, what about the Preakness? You know, and you don't really get to enjoy the Derby because all the focus becomes on the Preakness then. You know, so it's, it's looking back, you, you've got to try and enjoy it as, as much as you can because it, it just it goes so quickly. After his Kentucky Derby win, the charismatic Barbaro became one of the most popular racehorses in the country. I remember riding him out at um, Keeneland and I heard these women scr basically screaming, there he is, there he is. And uh, I was riding, my Michael was on the pony and I was looking around and I thought someone famous was there. And I was looking for somebody famous. It was Barbara, it was just him. They wanted to take pictures of him and and that was just it was just unbelievable the the, 
the amount of tension that he, he brought on himself, you know, it was unbelievable. Next came the second leg of the Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes at Pimlico. He trained really good, he breathed nicely. Um, we, I, I even galloped him in the morning of the Preakness as well, and Steve Haskin, who works for the Blood Horse, was there, and I, what do you think? And he was like, super. And I was like, yeah, he thinks a million dollars. One bad step and, and, and the end of a career, it was, it was heartbreaking, really, you know? It, 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 it took a long, long time to get over that, just how cruel it was, really. Going into the Preakness year, we were thinking that he couldn't get beat, and, and that happened. It was just, it, it, it brings you down to earth with a real big bang. Every possible effort was made to save Barbaro's life. He went through multiple surgeries, and although he received the best care possible, the nation was left heartbroken when the mighty Barbaro eventually succumbed to his injuries and was euthanized on January 29th, 2007. Well, we, we, we've been ticking along. We've never had a we, we've had a horse that ran in the Derby. We had, you know, we had a couple of really nice horses, but nothing Derby potential. You know, you're always waiting when the two-year-olds come in. You know, the colts. Is this the one? Is this the one? And um, we just never found the one until last year when um, Union Rags arrived. And he arrived, and he was this big, very, very handsome horse. I mean, really, really strikingly handsome with a beautiful attitude. Uh, it was so much that he, after about two days at Palmetto's, he could go the track on his own, he could gallop around on his own, just very, very sensible. And I just thought he was way too good looking. I thought that there was gonna be a fault in him somewhere. Everybody liked him, he did everything right, but he was just this very, very good looking horse. And I just kept looking for a flaw in him and we've yet to find one, really. After dominating in his first two starts, Union Rags was entered in the grade one champagne stakes. He had a terrible trip in the champagne, you know, but he actually quickened a, a lot better than I had imagined he quickened, and he won that really well. Really, really, really impressive. Union Rags looks for a way through down inside. Now he looks for the way through outside into the final furlong. Alpha kicking in, and now there's running room for Union Rags, and Union Rags is full of run. Right to vote and Alpha. Union Rags to Breeders' Cup Riches. A five-length winner of the Champagne Stake. It was a very tough trip. It, it was, um, you know, first of all, I think R Ramon gave Hanson a, a brilliant ride, but to get beat as, as, as close as he did was, was a big gut wrench. Hanson is running an absolutely huge one on the inside. Hanson just keeps on going. Union Rags is shifting to the outside. Query, of course, is third. Hanson keeps going. Union Rags, Hanson, and Union Rags. Hanson, the more they asked, the more he gave. And Hanson, what a thriller. The plan was to give him a break, which we did. And um, it, it just seemed the fan of the youth, the Florida Derby, the Kentucky Derby. It just seemed right. We didn't have to ship anywhere. We've got enough money. You know, and all being well, if you know we didn't have any problems, it, it just seemed the sensible thing to do. So then, when we brought him back and I put my saddle back on him, he was a big boy. Yeah, he, he put an awful lot of weight, and then he'd grown an awful lot too. And um, but his attitude was the same, very good attitude. But he, he he was an awful lot stronger. There was excitement in the air as Union Rags made his three-year-old debut in the Grade Two Fountain of Youth. He surprised me, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I thought we had him run about 80% fit. He was giving six pounds away to every other horse in the race. So, he, he, he's, he's not, when you breeze him at home, he, he does what you ask him and not much more. He, he's pretty laid back. And um, to win like he did, I, I thought it was a pretty impressive performance. Discreet Dancer has the rail. News pending is third, and they're into the stretch, and it's Union Rags. Union Rags to the eighth pole, pulling away. And then it's News pending, Discreet Dancer, followed by Neck and Neck, coming to the wire. Oh, what a comeback. Union Rags by four on the wire. He's doing great, I think, you know. And he's fit now and ready to go, so. You know, we couldn't be happy with the way he's, with the way he's training. He is as straightforward as you could have in a racehorse. Um, he's going through a bit of a teenager spell where he wants to bite people at the moment, and, you know, he thinks he's the king of the castle. 
but the, you know he'll get over that pretty soon and um, he's just the most straightforward horse you could ever hope for it's to ride to do anything with he's just such a pleasant character uh, Union Rand is a lot more laid back than Barbaro Barbaro was he knew when game day was on. You know, he he, he did he, he didn't like to be stood still for the saddling. Union Rags would stand all day for saddling, you know, he, he just it totally the temperaments are totally different. He's so laid back. And um, I think he actually he really enjoys the limelight, he enjoys what he does and he would stand around all day long normally. You know, having his picture taken. He, he I think he knows he's quite good looking. You know Michael had a um, a letter the other day from a ten year old girl who was five at the time of Barbaro and she really loved Barbaro and now she's following Union Rags and you know it, it's nice that a, a ten year old girl would take the time to write a letter to Michael that, that all and it, it was all because of Barbaro when it happens the first time it, it seems to happen and then it's over in a flash and you're like maybe we should do that again you know and, and I think once you've done it once you think it's it's automatically it's gonna happen in the next couple of years but it doesn't and I think that's the beauty of it you know when it comes around you the second time you, you're gonna enjoy it an awful lot more and, and sort of like seize the moment if, if you like you know so with this fellow we, we, we we're, I think we're gonna enjoy it a little bit more